Catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry about them Get, get, get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry about them I got some stuff coming up that you don't need to miss And it's a shame that my name you act like don't exist When you see me coming up, making fuss, catch my dust Watch me win, pay attention, I'm the one you never mention while they hating, speculating about their paper I feature Burn them eyes, made that fire move on higher I feature Bring fame to the name, made them change it I feature While they hating, speculate, anticipate that Get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry about them Get, get, get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry Never ever let me in laughing with me like we friends See I ain't down with that pay for play throwing Benji man Because I work the system, shave the system, play the system, beat the system Look at all the minds on me, cause I'm making history I feature, while they hate and speculate about that paper I feature, burn their eyes, make that fire move on higher I feature, bring fame to the name, make them change it I feature, while they hate and speculate, anticipate that Get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry about them Get, get, get up, catch it, grab it, let them see ya, throw it at them Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever worry about it. Don't you ever stop doing your thing. Don't stop, don't quit. Gotta let me see you go. Yeah. Keep on striving, keep on dreaming. Your dream aim high worldwide. Don't ever lose your focus. Did you don't lose focus. Focus. Get up, catch it, grab it, let them see you, throw it at them. Stand up, do it, be it, never, ever, do it, follow. I feature, while they hate and speculate about their paper. I feature, burn them eyes, make that fire move on higher. I feature, bring fame to the name, make them change it. I feature, while they hate and speculate, anticipate them. I feature, while they hate and speculate about their paper. I feature, burn them eyes, make that fire move on higher. I feature, bring fame to the name, make them change it. While they hate and speculate, anticipate that Everybody dance around, let you can't stop hard, put your feet on the floor Ain't nobody fly like you, lift it up, turn around and let it all go I, I, I don't wanna hear it cause you're running and to finish step back home, we don't interrupt Walking on the front because I'm throwing it on purpose and I focus, never ever giving up Yeah, okay Big, 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 big. This has been a beast lane Yep, I done popped up on you. It is the middle of the week. Our normal show is every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but today is December the 4th, 2019, and it is 6.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the East Coast. And I want you guys to know that I have a very important update, not only to give to the LRLers, but also to the members of the Relentless Church. Since your pastor not going to tell you nothing, I'm going to tell it to you because I feel like you need to be in the darn know. Now, we have been following this story since Jesus was a baby and the devil was in the tennis session singing with a tambourine switching side to side acting like a straight bat little junior peppermint. 
Now, this is what I want to say to those of you that are watching before I get all the way into this story. Number one, if you want to make sure you stay connected to me, you got you need to become a Patreon. You go to LarryLive.com, click Patreon, become a supporting, supporting LRL. I mean, of course, you share, you like, you're supporting, but we talking about money. Uh-huh. So we got a whole leap of stuff going on. I will be in court tomorrow at 9 a.m. But I can't say nothing about it. That's all I can say, what my lawyer said I can say. But the shout out to Unwind with Tasha K. Thank you so much for connecting me to your law, your team, because they have been a godsend. It hasn't all been easy, but i update y'all about that later on because I haven't been talking about that for a long time. But anyway, I need all of you to hit like right now. Oh, also to stay connected to me, make sure you text Labrie Live No Spaces to this number. This is not a, a normal 10-digit number. It's 33222. So open up your text. Put the number 33222 in there and then text Larry Live with no spaces. So I can always text you when I'm about to go live. You being Patreon, you know everything. Nine times out of ten before I share it here. And you definitely know way more than the general public knows. Okay? <sighs> Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, make sure you hit like. And there's a reason and a strategy behind that. But we want to keep this stream right now very strong and at the top of everybody's algorithm. And, we, and them haters, them same six or seven folk that like to give our video a thumbs down and report it while we are live. Let's go ahead and just give them a black eye by everybody hitting like. You may have to pull out of the app, then come back to the video, hit like, and get back into the chat. Um, I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that as I go ahead and set up this show. You tuned in to Larry Live, your most favorite entertainment digital news on talk show. There ain't nowhere else on the internet that is like Larry Live. This is the absolute best version of it, of this whole, this thing here. Everybody else do what they do, but can't nobody do what LRL does. All right. So there ain't no place like this place. And we are probably the most trustworthy source when it comes to stuff. You ain't going to baby pull up one thing that you find out was a lie and you find out the lie here. It just ain't happen. That's the reason why a whole lot of outlets always echo what we're talking about here because I tend to do my work to make sure that I can give you the update that you need now. Let me tell you a story. For those of you that do not know who John Gray is, by the end of this show, you will know. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Nancy, why you choose that picture? He looked like he done did something he ain't got no business doing. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why you? I call him Baby Jakes. Baby Jakes being, you know, he's the baby version of Daddy Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes. I call him Baby Jakes. And his wife's name is Aventor, but I call her The Avenger. Because she got superpowers. She be telling this man why he ain't got no business doing. He still go do it anyway. But right here, he looked like I did it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Uh. Yeah, I texted. Uh. Yeah, I ate up all of it. Uh. Yeah, I spent all the money. Uh. They know what it's like. <laughs> Kendall, you shady and you missed it. <laughs> you could have chose any other picture side this one. <laughs> Why you choose this? <laughs> Ow! This tickle me. Thank you, Natcha. I needed that because this is so hard to be talking about some of the stuff, especially people that you like. If you've been following me since 2016, you know there was a string of preachers that I originally liked, and he was one of the preachers. And when I say light, ain't some ain't talking about they preaching and they power anointing and all of that. It just seemed like that they were pretty cool people. This guy I liked because he was funny, comedy, his music is, you know, praise and worship and he sing and write. So that's why I liked him. But he has proven to be a big old kid. That's what I think. A big old kid that now has a position and he don't know what in the whole hell and the heaven to do with it. So let me catch you up. He originally was the black body that Joel Osteen ministry used in order to connect with their brown audience. Now, when I say that, 
I am not saying that that's the only reason why they chose him, but let's just make it plain. You know that if you're going to have any kind of business and do anything you're dealing with the public, you need a black face. We see the same thing with the Plantation Network. That's why they had George Bloomer's skinty version, George Bloomer's, that was up there sitting up there as the house nigga, getting everybody to get their Mondays. Now, but you know that number went all the way to hell, and that's a whole mess, and there's a boycott going on, and that's still, and they have really dropped them. They dropped the number seven. The calls that went from hundreds a day, I think they said thousands a day to barely a hundred, and the donations, everything that went down because you guys did your job by listening to me. But anyway, so he do the Wednesday nights. You know they love him over there. You know he's one of the. He's really crossoverish. When I say crossoverish, I'm I'm talking about not just a church person, but probably can do some things secularly. Definitely the comedy thing, and then also has crossover appeal, meaning from the black church audience to the white church audience so that's really what we know him for over there joe Osteen, the funny plump black dude baby james probably about a year oh it was last year wasn't it jesus christ it's only been a year he done fucked this all the way up this here fast but i prophesied it i told y'all you should just listen to me i told you but you're gonna find out what i'm talking about stay tuned and stay right here and I'm going to tell you this entire story. But relentless church need to know that they have been ruined ever since I started talking about it. But definitely since November the 27th, 2019. And baby Jake, you know now with me giving that date that I already know what they don't know. After this commercial break, I'm coming back and I'm going to tell it. Are you in need of direction for a decision you have to make? Maybe you're curious about the future. If that's you, the founders of Zoe Ministries and the Company of Prophets are offering you free prophecy. Call 888-831-0434. Don't wait. Call 888-831-0434. Do it today. All right, that's the advertisement from Bishop Bernard Jordan. He is the mentor and the personal prophet of so many celebrities and stars and church leaders. So if you need to get connected and get direction for your darn life, contact Bishop Jordan, bishopjordan.com, and at that number I played. All right, let's get back to this here. So Joel Osteen Church, doing really well. There was a pastor in South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina. His name is Ron Carpenter. In fact, Apostle Ron Carpenter. This white man, brilliant. Let's just go ahead and put this out there. You got to give honor where honor is due. And this is a brilliant, intelligent, and integral man and businessman, period. I'm from the Carolinas, so I know about this dude. I don't know him personally, but I know about this dude. When I say about, you know, those of you that are watching, you know, I passed it for 20 years before I went into doing entertainment, this kind of work here. So I know this about him. I can't say anything but positive about this man. And I pray to God they don't nothing, never come out and have to sit right here and say something else. You know, because I only deal with what is public. If it ain't public, Larry don't talk about it. You have got to be public and already got something going on into it. So he plucked up Baby Jinx. He plucked up Baby Jinx and said, bring your hind over here to Greenville, um, um, South Carolina, and I want you to work because I got this other opportunity in California with my wife to go over there and do a church. <laughs> this picture is killing me. <laughs> There ain't nothing else you can do. This is just ugly, D. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, have mercy. And Lord, that poke collar and tie. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> I can't. Have I got. I got to just totally forget that this thing is beside me. This is wearing me. He's, this right. This. No, it's gonna have to be him. You just got. I just gotta pay no attention if I say this here. But this, <laughs> oh Lord, and how it goes straight from chin to collar. Where is the neck? Lord have mercy. Okay. <laughs> 
So he picked them up, brought them up. But he ain't pick them up. That's just a figure of speech. There ain't no way in the world Ron Carpenter has picked Baby Jake's up. Go had he picked him up, Ron Carpenter would not walk for a little piece. But anyway, he picked he picked them up and had them come over there to Greenville. So he started going to Greenville and he took over the church officially. I think March, no May, the last week of May last year, they had a service and everything. Well, when they did their they, their service, about that same time. They, they began to talk. When I say they, I'm talking about Baby Jakes and his wife, the Avenger, John Gray and Aventer. They began to talk about, uh, we don't have no picture of them together? Okay, we'll make one right quick. Or just make that smaller beside them. Oh, no, not that yet, because not that picture. Well, i just talk about it. Leave them up here. Okay, so they came, um, came up there, and one of the things that was said, like, within the first few weeks of being there, they got on stage and talked about how, at some point in time, their marriage was broken down, and the devil brought some satanic woman into John's life that spoke to the little boy in John and to his brokenness, and as a result, she, uh, the Avenger had to come in and come up against the devil and now everything is all right and it was just the devil, the devil and this strange woman, I think that's what they're calling it. Um, now, that didn't even get publicized at the time. Now, we're in June of 2018 now. We went from May to June. I'm bringing you up to date and I got to tell you what just happened. November 27, 2019. So that happened in June. So at this point, Ron Carpenter, and John Gray, everything is good. You're doing a, a good job. You used to come here preach all the time. You're still doing a good job. I saw how the people respond to you. This has been a great idea. Things are still great. So then we go into July. Around July and August, something happens. There's a great party, and there's a celebration of eight years of being married. And this picture began to circulate around the internet. Now, this is a beautiful picture. Let's go ahead and give them their props. The Avenger and Baby Jakes look really good in this picture. Look real good at his jacket, the design the, on the dress. The girl look good. He looks debonair. This is one to darn fall. Praise God. The background, everything. Thank you, Jesus. Looks good. Wonderful. But then something happened at this event. Near the end of this event, something occurred that began to get um, global, and this is no stretch, global recognition. Now, mind you, everything that I've said up, up to now, Larry Reed won't even, I think I talked about him getting the church and the switch over. That's it. I didn't know anything about what they said, this testimony that they gave at church in June. And at this time, I didn't even know about this event. But someone sent me this video. This is what happened at the end of this event. Baby Jakes gave the Avenger a gift. Watch. <laughs> All right, now when this happened, he gifted her a Lamborghini, over $200,000 car. Now, if you have followed this story, you already know that I explained to you how they have said in several interviews that him and her both love cars and sneakers. So this was like a, a an ex, I will say, a, a extraordinary gift for eight darn years of marriage. I don't care if you come and meet somebody, eight is a number, new beginners, and all of that stuff. Mm -mm, no. The moment I heard about this, this is what I said. I'm not going to run the clip, but if you follow me, you already know. I said, what in the whole hell and heaven is going on here? I was married 18 years. I'm not anymore. I got sense enough to know that ain't nobody buying no $200,000 car and got all of this. This event was thousands of dollars. There ain't no way in the world that we're doing this for an eight-year anniversary. I said, this don't make no sense. I said, what did he do? There's something that he did. There's no way in the world that you, come on, brothers, help me out. Come on. And sisters, you need to know this. 
There ain't no way. If that man come home tonight with a gift out the blue, you need to know something done did. He's trying to make it right. And whatever story he told you he did, it's half the story because that's what it done with the events. Well, let me get to it. So I started saying something ain't right. I don't know what it is, but it just ain't right. Well, at the same time, I was doing like two or three other different stories. And so the pool of women that I began to deal with, victims of these pastors and preachers, we sort of found out it was it's a ring of these women that seem like massagers, um, escorts, some professionals that these preachers pass around. That's why I came up with the term pass around puss and volunteer vagina is these women get passed around and they volunteer their vagina. If you a grown woman, you can't tell me nobody. Now, there can be a case where you can end up being raped, but that ain't the main. I think I had one case of that, but that ain't the main thing. You volunteer your vagina to be plummeted through by the, by the men of the cloth. You let them just run up in that side of you. And some of y'all real freaky women let them in your bread basket right in the center of your wheel. I seen it. What you say? Where? Who? Hold on a minute. Kendra is telling me I need to block somebody. Hold on for a minute. Let me go ahead and find who this person is that I, I have to block. This is a Facebook or YouTube. Yeah, cause YouTube, they I got moderators over there, so I don't I don't see her. Y'all tell me when she comment, and I will get rid of her. I said something she doing over and over. That's one or two, cause you know you you too much. Okay, well I ain't really concerned about it. I get her afterwards. Let me go ahead and get with this story. <sighs> but anyway, you ain't got the thing where you can block for. Can you pin the comment? All right, I ain't, this is too much. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not going to concern. I do that afterwards. Okay, so anyway. So then, Lord, what was I talking about? See, that's what I'm like getting on. What was I saying? You don't even know because you were looking in the comments. I don't even know what the last thing I said. But uh, some of these women, yeah, some of these women, I mean, just really freaky. You know, so we ain't going to just make it look like that it was just on the preachers. When it comes actually to what is done by two adults, but we are holding the moral leaders and the community leaders and the church leaders and pastors accountable for all of this going is about. Now we are going to do that. We and the reality here, me for myself, I don't expect no church leader or pastor to be perfect. But what I do not expect is for you to be an absolute crook and an absolute criminal and predator and actually using your power and your position to do what in the world you want to do when it comes to all these people. Now, that's the whole problem. You're going around injuring folk, and see then, and then it comes public, then you're going to have to deal with me sitting in this chair talking about you, okay? That's just how it's going to work. So, as a, result, as a result of that, there was a lady, actually like two or three different women that, if actually, the, I'm going to say her name, Sandra was responsible for connecting me with someone that she alleged was the strange woman that they were talking about. Well, when I began to talk to this woman, she was very open and she trusted me. Oh, no, her name is Sandy. I said Sandra, didn't I? Sandy. <laughs> what ended up happening, she started trusting me a whole lot right off and allowed me to just have hours of conversations with her. Now, this happened between me and her probably September, October. No, 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 no. This was November. This happened between me and her in November. I recorded all of the conversation. I interviewed her. I'm talking literally about three hours of audio. I knew at that time that the reason that he spent that money and done what he did was because of this girl. Because by this time, I had already heard about what they said in the pulpit in June. I'd done a show and I played that clip. But this is what I found out in a second conversation with this lady, because this girl is from here, the mistress. When we began to compare notes, whoever they was talking about on stage, that story did not even align 
with the story that she was telling me. And she was saying, you know what? I don't think he was talking about me. I don't think his wife was talking about me being the strange woman. It was somebody else because we didn't do this. We did this. We didn't do that. We did this. Of course, 22 minutes of that interview, I ended up playing about what, four or five months later because this is what happened. When I began to do the story, then the grades began to get in the pulpit and basically throw off at me and was calling my lawyer at the time, Phaedra Parts, who's a friend, she began to call her and, you know, harass and say, you know, he needs to stop doing this. Why is he doing this? Da, 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 da. They started talking in certain circles behind my back and saying I was doing this and trying to extort them. To stop. All different kind of crazy crazy was happening around there. So at this time, I'm getting a little upset, but I'm saying, you know, I didn't have Patreon at the time. I would just come up here and say I saw something and you guys just had to believe that I saw the evidence. So I, did, I didn't even put it out. I held it. I said, now, if you keep right on talking, then I'm going to have to you know, protect myself and prove what I'm saying. So we went through December. I think it was. I think I ended up playing a voicemail. <laughs> this is the face he had to make once I'd done that show. Like, oh, my God. I can't believe I left a voicemail on, on my host's phone. That's what it did. But what I did, I only put out a piece of the voicemail. I didn't put out the whole voicemail. I put out a piece and just said, really was trying to send a message to him and give him time to just go ahead and tell, first of all, his wife the truth because they were doing interviews with Breakfast Club, V105, One Time a Sister Circle, the, the Real... One time she said that she didn't know the woman. She made like she didn't know him. Then the next time she said, I did know the person. I was like, this, these folk just keep telling these lies. And then went on this whole campaign that my wife is the best thing in the world. And, it's, and then somehow his wife is his covering. I mean, the media had a field day with this. And I'm just sitting back watching all of this and saying, Lord, baby Jakes, just go ahead and just clear all this up and do this right. You know, because this is going to hurt you in the end. Are you trying to build this new church? Okay. So I went on to do other stories, but I kept, you know, saying certain things, trying to send him a message. Get your mess together because this, this don't need to be something that, that, you know, continue to go on. So after that happened, he went on about his life. And I guess they felt like everything was okay. You know, because one of the things that a lot of these pastors and preachers have, they're so narcissistic and egotistical that they really feel like, Nothing can take them down, and they don't have to really be accountable. So what ended up happening was he took his hips to California during the Stella Awards. Allegedly, he met a woman, took, a, took her to his hotel room. They got high, allegedly didn't have sex, but she stayed in the room. I don't know if I'm in. Is that her texting me now for the first time and I don't know how long? Oh, Lord. Okay, we might have to do a little short interview. But I thought the girl didn't, ain't talk to me in months. Okay, well, anyway. She went to the Stella Award Jake's, not Jake, baby Jake's was still doing this campaign of I love my wife and the devil and the devil. And this girl got convicted, contacted me. She had took pictures of the hotel room key. Her friend verified when he called her because she was on speakerphone. The, the, all of the stuff from the hotel room. His underwear, what he had on, which coincided with something I already knew but I hadn't told y'all yet. His T-shirt, um, pictures of everything, I put it out. I didn't have Patreon at the time, so I only showed like one or two, I think there's one shot here on the show. I didn't have Patreon at the time. I didn't even know anything about it, or I would have just put it all over there. Um, and y'all just had to take what I said. So he done that thing uh, again, put himself, he should have been in the hotel with a woman. You know, he's married, and just wants smart to do. And this. So then I ended up putting out more information from 
the audio I had of the a, a woman here from Atlanta. So that went on and that happened. Later on, he came up in the media concerning buying these sneakers, thousands of dollars. He asked the church to raise $200,000 for the roof. Found out the church bought him a house, $1.7 million. He came on live crying about that because they had to stay in the hotel. He also came on live talking about that the money that he used for buying his wife that truck it was not the church's money. But then all these other outlets, even in Greenville, South Carolina, began to really get into the financial aspect. Later on, I did a show. And in this show, I explained to you guys, and I probably didn't say the amount, but I'm going to say it tonight, that he had not been making payments since he took over the church. Here we go. Begin to listen. Pull closely so you can understand. When Ron Carpenter gave him the church, allegedly there was $1 million in the Relentless Church account. As a give or startup from Ron Carpenter, i.e. Redemption Church. Redemption World Outreach Church is the name of the church before he got it. He changed the name of it. Okay. The house that they bought in order to entice him to accept this package, according to God, what's that man named Horace that worked on the staff? was to buy this $1.7 million home. But mind you, he done bought this $200,000 vehicle, and now you're asking the folk for $200,000 to fix the roof. And I was sitting here saying, none of this makes sense. It's a dumb, who's this boy mentor? He didn't go over there to Daddy Jake's, which was another show I did because he went to go see Daddy Jake's. Allegedly, Daddy Jake's told Baby Jake's to meet him in the DMV area because he was going there to preach. I guess they were going to talk later, but you know how Jake's is. He loved every darn body and always try to fix everybody's wrong. There's probably nobody in Christendom who has done wrong that T.D. Jake's has not laid hands on you to try to restore you. So basically you can get back to preaching on the road and continue to take care of your family. So when that happened, I played that particular clip here and he began to cast out the spirit of suicide. Now, see, this is the thing. This is where I start side-eyeing every darn body. Because in that instance, Jake laid hands on him and he was saying God was using you to, um, to using the church and you passing the church to grow you up. I do not agree with that type of idea. So God going to use you pastoring, playing over the folk, frucking women, Going through money, making bad financial choices for the relentless church, spending thousands of dollars in lighting for the church. Todd Galbert, that is a praise and worship leader there from the Carolinas. I've known several, several years from the Fayetteville, North Carolina, or right for North Carolina. Cut his pay to hire Tasha Cobbs and her husband as the MD. You just start bringing it, creating all this debt and just burning through this million of dollars. And at the same time, which is a show I did, you were not paying the $26,000 you're supposed to pay to Ron Carpenter every month. Let me explain. Why was he supposed to give Ron Carpenter $26,000 a month? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was a rental and a lease agreement between these two. Yes. The Relentless Church and John Gray was renting the facilities, both facilities. Wait a minute. Let me tell you the addresses. Both facilities. One is at 635 Haywood Road, Greenville, South Carolina, 29607. And also 80 Birdland Drive, Greenville, South Carolina, Two nine six zero seven. Drawn, but this none of this was written out. Now this is the problem. Allegedly, this is a whole nother problem I got with this. All of this was done by God said. God told me. I felt like we even saw on John Gray's show that now is canceled. 
amid all of these allegations and all of this crazy that happened in the media, the ratings went down. I think the last time I looked at was number 141, so they didn't renew him there, which he said the reason why he was able to buy the car and all this stuff was because of his check on a reality show. But now he ain't getting that check. So mm, this is all looking all kind of sideways and won't making the $26,000 payment every single month. So he uh, uh, basically didn't pay his rent. Now, you judge from June, July, last year to now. My calculation is over half a million dollars he owed. And as a result, there's some things that are taking place and have recently happened. Now, let me make sure that I ain't forgetting that before I get up to there. I think what has recently happened as of November the 27, 2019 is not the result of just bad business dealings. I think we forget the whole God factor thing. If you want to be blessed, now we know bad things happen to, to good people, but if you want to be blessed, you got to deal with truth. And I feel as though, for one reason or the other, that Baby Jakes, John Gray, did not want to be honest. I talked to your counselors, and they told me they told you to tell the truth, to make a statement at the church, and you never did. You lied and lied. Even after I put up, have we got that in there? I want you to play what I put up, the voicemail that he left the woman. Because, see, nobody, everybody took all the, the information from me, all these outlets, but they never gave me the, the credit. But all this came from me, and I still have two hours' worth of audio detail from one of the mistresses because I believe there are more than one. So let's play that, and then let me come back and tell y'all what happened in November. Yo, are you, like, ignoring me now? I'm just trying to make sure. Let me get this straight. I'm being ignored by someone who I have fought to so feed into, get resources to. I'm in your city, and I can't get a call back. I just wanted to make sure I got my facts straight. Got it. This message deleted. My wife saw our text messages from Friday. She knows you were in the same hotel as me. And she does not know that I went to your room. She doesn't remember me leaving. She's got your number. Even after I released this in part, because you just saw it in, in its entirety, but even after I released this in part, he still did not have a true conversation with the congregants, and I believe with his wife, he did not do it. I live for you guys right now, because I can tell by the way this thing is acting, people reporting the live. Hit like right now so you don't miss what I'm going to say next, what, I be what has happened and what I believe about it. And I'm going to open the lines too. Hit like right now and share. <sighs> okay. I'm not talking about those emotion cons. I hit the like button. All right. He, he lied. I, I, I think he lied. He lied and talking about there was no intercourse at all. It was just conversation. Y'all remember that? He went on the reel and Lonnie Love sat right there. But she used to ask the hard questions. You can tell who they were friends with because she didn't ask no hard questions. And the other girl, this Israel Hutton, um, um, what's her name, Adrian? And you know he was allegedly dating her before he even divorced his wife. 
And he was at Joel, o and they something at Joel Osteen Church. Because Joel Osteen had to let him go right when all that happened. Lord, have, Joel, have your people to call me again like y'all did about this John Gray thing. I told y'all, Joel, I told y'all, I ain't going to say the girl name, but I told y'all this was a whole mess that was going to happen. And I even sent word to Ron Carpenter. I said, this man is not ready for this position. Now y'all know. You should have listened to me. You should have listened. I'm black. I know us. Telltale signs. Now y'all got to clean this mess up. And I don't know how this is going to end. <laughs> So, he didn't tell the truth. He done what he done at the Stella Awards with a whole nother woman. Bought this car, which he should have never bought. That's my opinion. You knew this was the dumb move. And I tell all you pastors, quit buying all these personal, big, flashy things and then putting it out in publications and telling people, stop this mess. But why did you have to buy your wife to my I should be able to buy my wife something if I want to, but you a pastor. You are a whole and entire pastor. Can they hear me? You are a whole and an entire pastor. You are a serve, a server in the community. All of y'all buying all this flashy type stuff. This this ain't good to do. So this is one thing. Then they got out there talking about the girl was the devil and all this stuff. Now, this is what has happened. Of course, like I said, Todd Gabbard that was there to cut his stuff in order to hire Tasha McCobbs and her husband as MD over there, which I know you can't afford that and that whole lighting thing you're doing all the darn time. So now, and they have not paid the $26,000 a month. As of November the 26th, 2019, John Gray and Relentless Church have been evicted. I want you to oh, take a breath. John Gray and the Relentless Church has been evicted. Breath. I'm going to say it one more again. I said, John Gray, I'm the Relentless Church, has been evicted for non payment of a lease agreement and running the church, the reputation, and the money into a hole. Are, are, you, hear, are you hearing me? Now, this happened November the 27th, I think it was. All right. Now, they must be out of the church by December the 31st. But wait a minute. They didn't get the people. It's 27 days. This is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it's something, and this is the thing that I that I have. This ain't the have a uh, problem I have. This didn't have to be. And now the members must be displaced because what he probably going to do versus going back to Texas, he is probably going to stay in Greenville and continue relentless church, but put them in another building. Allegedly, Ron Carpenter and his wife is supposed to be coming back or now going to try to pass the both churches. Now, what I don't like is when stuff go down like this, 
See, people, they really loud about whatever it is. But something like this should have been disclosed at a level and in a way for the, cause all of this happened before the whole world. And somebody may be like, well, he doesn't have a responsibility just to, just to his members. No. We need for you to do the same thing you did going around trying to get us to prove that you was not doing what you were doing on your wife. You need to go right around and talk to everybody about how you came to this space. What? Don't just tell about, you know, we're going to still go to the next. Because that's what they're going to do. Get in the pool, but about, we don't care. Everybody talking, but we're going to take it to the next level. And that's all great. But tell us about what went on between you, God, and yourself in this process to where now this has happened. And maybe even we can hear from Ron Carpenter because he chose him. He chose him. Joel let him do this. Why do, who's your leadership? Are you listening to Jake, Joel, Ron? What are you doing? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I want to know what y'all think about it. I'm opening up the lines. The number is 646-787-8174. 646-787-8174. Eighty-one, seventy-four. Y'all got that? Six four six, seven eight seven, eighty-one, seventy-four. All right, my my phone's blowing up. My inbox is blowing up. Who? Oh, okay. Well, green. All right, let's go. Caller ending in 5128. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Tadika Drake, and I'm calling from California. All right, tell me what Hi, you think. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? I'm good. Okay, well, I just wanted to comment because I've been watching you for a long time, and I have been thinking about Baby Jake's for a long time and wondering accountability. How come there's no accountability in any of these churches, regardless, any of these churches from him to all these other people that you've been talking about? Where's the accountability? Why are there so many people being abused and things taken advantage of and this church has now fallen to be evicted? This should have never, ever, ever happened. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for taking my call. I agree. Thank you so much. Where's the accountant? Not just accountability. Where's the darn accountant? Accountability, accountant. Right behind all of that cost stuff, then he will at, and and we came out about buying a house at one point seven million dollars for that the church did. Then you turn around and ask for two hundred thousand dollars from the people for the roof. What 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 is the purpose? I mean, ain't the tithe and the offering and all this money given for the furtherance of the ministry, or is it to build somebody's empire, somebody's brand? What are we really doing? Are we more concerned about the building, the edifice, and the look that we're expanding every, everywhere and we have this great facility? Or is it really about doing ministry? And don't tell me you need that building a certain kind of way to do ministry. I sit here every single day and I didn't spend a million dollars, not every single day, a million dollars to talk to over 100,000 people a week. Are churches draining their members of money to build an old model? I think putting churches in every state, five locations, is a dead old model let, let let me say that loud and and take this from someone who passes for 20 years and who heard god say 10 or 12 years ago about the old dying and moving to the new and expanding beyond the four walls of the church their video all online me in the pulpit preaching that stuff so i'm not just saying that sitting here and judging y'all behind y'all got your aspirations and dreams to build old stuff that God ain't even doing no more. That's my opinion. You're late. 
You got a dream. You got a vision of what you want to do. You want to be the next Dad of Grace. You want to be the next T.D. Jakes. Doing these conferences. T.D. Jakes ain't even doing all them conferences no more. He ain't got four, five services no more. He, got it. he can't even fill up all of the thing in his church no more. It's a different time and age. The accountability and the accountant, that's dumb. Downsize, get your own line presence, your streaming, your app, and all that together so that you connect to your audience without all that overhead. And you ain't got to live in a 10, 20, I think Joe Austin House is $11 million. I understand what you want to have, but we're in a different kind of business than Jay Z and Beyonce. Mm -mm. All right. I, there's a little bit of a rant. I'm sorry. Let me get back to the callers. Caller ended in 8878. What's your name? Where you calling from? Got one minute. Hey, Larry. You got one minute. Let's go. Call caller in and then seven eight forty nine forty um seven eight forty nine. What's your name? Where you calling from? Got one minute. Let's go. Seven eight forty nine. That's me, I guess. Um, yeah, that is me. I'm I'm just curious as to why he didn't have an accountant at the church. I'm just curious as to do you know why he didn't have the, the structure in a way. So that this didn't happen, because it sounds like to me he was just doing everything himself. I'm gonna tell you this, and without calling certain church names that I can't call, but a lot of these churches are set up to where their board is actually peppered with people that either are yes men or they have disempowered the board. Because let me tell you what can happen. Let's suppose the relentless church says. No, we want our original pastors back. You go on about your business and do whatever you want to do, and we're going to keep the relentless church name. Well, we have to look at the paperwork and see what the paperwork looks like, who's on the board. And then we also got to look at the bylaws because it could be possible that, let's suppose the church want to get rid of John, so you done did all this crazy stuff, but let's get rid of you. Well, first you have to have a vote amongst the board, and the board has the vote. Then, and a lot of churches put this in their bylaws. I'm telling y'all this so the people can know, and also those of you that are pastors, because you know, it's a matter of job security. Then it has to go to the people. Well, the people don't know all the stuff that the pastor is doing and, and got going on, it's just the leadership. So right. the people just come to the church every Sunday. That's John Gray, that's my pastor. So the next, the second tier of that, they have to vote, and it's an 80 20 rule. He has to get 80% of the vote, I think it is, in order for him to stay the pastor. Well, if the people do not know, and the people sitting side by side, when you say, who want the pastor to go to a new church? And he done been hugging your children and hugging you and kissing you every Sunday and looking you in your eye, you ain't going to raise your hand sitting there in front of that man. You ain't going to do it. Right. So they really have it set up. The nonprofits are set up really like dictatorships. They got everything in place to get your 501c3 compliance. But the reality is, in them bylaws, they got stuff written and set up to where can't nobody put them out. Well, last question. So Ron Carpenter, did he not know how to like monetize or monitor, I'm sorry, monitor what John Gray was doing? Because it sounds like to me, he's not just evicting him. It sounds like to me, he's heard all of the rumors like the rest of us, and he just want him out of there. No, that's not it. <laughs> no, no, that's not it. Um, if you remember when Greenville did the uh, report on the finances concerning the house, it was made clear that a lot of the staff that was there for redemption, because you mind you, John Gray came in and just implemented his vision, and there were people that were still there from redemption. So those relationships okay. he still have okay. with those people there. So it's 
more than likely, and I'm going to say allegedly, a matter of his people crying, come save us. This is terrible. Right. We can't do this. We right. need a loan. We, and and then, then on top of him right. knowing that he's not been paying the rent when that was the verbal agreement. This is the reason why he's stepping back in right. and doing what an apostle do. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I appreciate Thank it, brother. Thank you so much. All right, peace. All right, caller ending in 1381. What's your name? Where are you calling from? You got one minute. Chrissy from Florida. Oh, I just want to say um, I love the fact that you got this news. First of all, that's what he gets because, and that's what Ron Carpenter gets. That's what Daddy Jake gets because, first of all, John Gray had two architects come and tell him, seasoned architects. These people have built churches, Ron Carpenter and Daddy Jakes, and he, they, you know, they knew he was a crack foundation, but they built on him anyway. So that's their fault because when you build on a crack foundation, the house is going to fall. They knew that man was cracked. They knew he was broken. His wife knew he was broken, but all they saw was dollar signs because they knew people liked him because they knew he had got into the ears of younger Christians. So they went, banked on that. And they built on that crack foundation. And that's what they all get. Now they all got egg on their face. I happen to agree. But I'm going to say this, though. I do know for, I can't say for a fact. Let me say allegedly, Bishop Daddy Jakes told him how to handle this. And he did not obey his directive. Allegedly. But he shouldn't have been in that position in the first place. Yeah, but you know that he ain't... should have never been given that that place in the first place. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. I do agree with that. But you know, Daddy Jake's it's can't. It's not even about telling them. Don't try to fix the house once it's built. Don't try to tell me what to do once it's built. And then, like the roof is caving in and the house leaning to the side. Now you want to fix it after the fact when what you should have done was tear up that foundation and repair it. And then you should have built on it. No, you saw the money. So guess what? Now you got egg on your face. Now Ron Carpenter is out of money. Now uh, Baby Jake's he gonna be out of money. I don't know what his wife's gonna do. I don't know how they gonna pay for that that car because I know they ain't paid for it. Paid for it. It's probably a lease. Or, well, he said it won't pay for. He said it won't pay and for. What, exactly. So it's just like, what you gonna do now? And then you got children. You dragging your children through the mud. This is just messy. And it's a shame that they even allowed it to get this bad because you gave them plenty of warnings. Plenty of warnings to let them know that this man is not right. This man is not telling the truth. But instead of them pulling the carpet from under his feet, they allow him to keep going on, keep dragging it out, keep dragging it out, instead of saying, no, you need to sit down. And that's what I have a problem with. And that's why I don't feel bad for none of them, because that's what all of them get. I don't care what nobody say. That's what the heck they get. And I won't feel bad for nobody. Well, in all of these stories, one thing that is consistent is that we do not see other leaders jumping in and holding other leaders accountable when they do or say something that is not good for themselves and those people that are in their lives. Um, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Have a good there are 6,015 of you watching me live right now. I need all of you to hit like on the video to make sure that we're not um, getting any um, issues on this back end. There's 6,000. And, f- and this sort of goes back to what I was saying early. Okay, there's 6,015 people watching on YouTube, Facebook, and Periscope. There's 325 people watching Relentless Church Live Bible Study right now. I'm telling you, the model is old, 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 old. And I wrote this seven years ago. I think I got a a, a blog I wrote concerning cyber churches five years ago. It's old. And that's a whole nother show. But get back to what the caller said. This is a whole problem. <sighs> See, y'all look at it as just Pastor John Gray, Relentless Church, evicted. Got to get out the church by December 31st. But look at how we got here. And I want him to talk about that on a personal level. We're not inside your head. 
This <laughs> this bitch out of skate. <laughs> okay. No, they're not, Kendall. No, they're not. They they're not getting up there talking about relentless is, is no pay for. Okay, if re, okay, look. You see, check the the play on words. If they're on live now saying relentless is paid for, they're talking about relentless church. That's just, that's their name. That's their name. Relentless church is paid for. Relentless has not been paying their bills, and they must leave December the thirty first. You see how to, this is the kind, this this kind of stuff that gets you where you at. And and let me say this: the way this thing is set up in this world, you can be absolutely crooked and still be successful and win. And I'm gonna tell you, I seen a whole lot of wicked wickedness win. And then there's a scripture that talk about. Basically letting us know that the wicked are going to win, but soon enough they're going to be cut down. Even me, myself, I have done wrong and still like stayed on top. But the Holy Ghost, I know y'all don't think I got it. Let me not call it the Holy Ghost, not make it churchy. But just my conscience, I'm, I'm going to say it like that, but I would rather say the Holy Ghost. Enemy will remind me, look, now, you, although you didn't get caught, and although this didn't become this right here, you know this ain't right. You better fix this, and don't you do this here no more. And be honest about this. You ain't telling you got to tell your whole business, but who it matters to, you better tell the truth. You get what I'm saying? That thing, that all, all of this, I'm looking sideways at a lot of this. A whole lot of this, I'm looking sideways. I supposed to have prayer at 8 o'clock, but that ain't happening because I'm here. See y'all Sunday at 8 a.m. But I, I, just, this is, I just don't even know. Okay, I'm going to take some more callers. Let's go. Can You can't even click on what's right. Call it in in the 50, 51, 41. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, my name is Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Talk. You got one minute. Hey, Mark. I'm calling from North Carolina, and I'm just a little perturbed with what's going on here uh, in these churches. But, you know, what I'm familiar with is having, you know, churches that you talked about accountability, but also they have accountants um, you know, and a sizable church like he should have like a uh, a financial officer of the church. So they they manage the finances, but also the uh, accounting firm will audit that person. So then you do an annual report that's published, and that way everybody knows what's going on in the church. Man, just so you know, there's so many loopholes around that, um, and there's so much... Um, Playing with numbers and stuff that uh, you can't have an open book policy because I did, but I am one hundred percent sure that the way I had an open book policy was not, is not the way that these churches do it. There's so much fudge, fudging and lying. And if you know a CPA, that's that's cool. They make sure that they cook the books, just like these drug people do all the time. All these millions of dollars these drug dealers make this cash. How, don't you know they got to clean that money through businesses? Sometimes churches do this. Laundry mats have, have, have um, um, stylists and tax um, places and things of that nature. And CPAs and accountants, they cook the books to make it look right. So I will say that I'm more concerned about just people being in leadership that have integrity than I am about looking at the books and making sure everything is right because that could be a whole lie that you create for me too. Thank you so much for calling in. Let Okay, hold on for a minute, call. I got to put you back on hold. Let me say this because I'm, I'm getting some messages. Let me say this and I want everybody at the Relentless Church to know this. Larry Reed, <clears throat> aside from being educated and fine, 
<laughs> I was a pastor for 20 years, Stella Award nominated artist, author of three books. I have connections in every church in the black community and some in the white. I've lived for 41 years. You don't know who I know. So Relentless Church and the leadership there, you won't be able to find out where the, if I got this information almost a week ago and I sat on the information and researched. I know that y'all hid some of the paperwork down. Let me go say it like this. I know people in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm from the Carolinas. You'll break your neck trying to figure this out and don't blame people. And you got to remember, I was very wealthy then too. So my friends are judges, doctors. I mean, connections. I don't really call them friends. That's normal. <laughs> Lawyers, judges, doctors, you know, CEOs, millionaires. What is that? Cops, politicians, and everybody run their mouth. So there ain't nobody faithful. So, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so don't rack your brain. Don't even rack your brain. Out of your mind. I'm going to tell you something. Some stories that I've done that I can't name. Some I can't. I'm going to say I can't name, I can, I just choose not to. Board members. The folk to go and make your deposit. Because see, a lot of you guys are narcissistic and egotistical and you're mean-spirited. And then folk will smile, hey, pastor, but they can't stand you. But they need the check that come from the church. But they already checked out in the spirit and just planning to leave any darn way. I'm never going to sit in this chair and do a story that's a lie, ever. Now, it's possible for me not to know the whole story, but it ain't going to be no lie. I'm not going to do that. And there's some, I'm going to say this here. Come clue. There's some more about this story that I ain't even going to say because I don't think it's conversation worthy because it's just more juice and and just this good gossip. It's good. <laughs> but it, there's no conversation to be created out of so I don't see no need of doing it. Let's just say, let's just say that there's an extramarital affair or two from Four years ago, maybe even of the same sex or opposite sex, by one of the people I'm talking about here on the show, and I've said their name. What if there is? What would be the point of bringing that into the conversation? Plenty of folk got girlfriends and boyfriends now. I don't know if that's something new, but If there was something else tied to that that can create a conversation that I would like to have on the platform, you'll see me bring it here. Otherwise, it's just that's their personal business. I mean, if, especially if the wife or the spouse knows about that hole, there's no need for me to talk about it. If y'all okay with it, then the, if some folk have open marriages and have agreements, then that's fine. That ain't my business. <laughs> <sighs> we were rooting for you. <laughs> All right, let's call her. Call her in and in seventy six fourteen. What's your name? Where you calling from? One minute. Uh, my name is Mark I'm from Dallas, Texas. Okay, go right ahead on. Yeah, yeah, Larry. Hey, man, I just want to say uh, thanks for. Um, being in the place that you are, you have encouraged me. I was deep into the church. I seen this nigger bitch. <laughs> I seen this stuff going on for life. Uh, nonprofit is for profit, and it's all about a business. I'm a small businessman. It's called investment. This is very crazy. 
this look like something that's going on in the White House every day. I'm sorry to say that it happens in the church, but it's going on daily. I do appreciate you and thank you because I left the church, but listening to you has kept me in a place to stay paper by the seed outside the church. I know that's right. I, I, I know that's right. Thank you so much for calling in. Somebody said something to me. They said, I left the church, but watching you, I actually found a new church, a new appreciation for the church. And so I think that a lot of times when I have to do these stories like that, it helps. Some people may keep them sick. That's the reason why I never go back. I mean, it is what it is. And maybe in the area that they live in, they don't need to go back. I don't subscribe to the whole idea of you have to have a pastor. I actually feel like you need a prophet more than you do a pastor. You know, so... If you're not going through the building, then, okay, you have other ways of assembling yourselves together. We all assembled right now. Last time I checked, about 6,000 of us live. We are all connected and assembled together right now. That's what the Bible say. Don't come to tell me that assemble yourself together means to go find a building somewhere with a pastor and you got to join to be a member. I don't believe that. I, there's nothing you're going to say or do that make me believe that. There's, you can, I would just, 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 just say it. And there's some places in this world there is no real church. It's just it's just thing. There's a scripture that talked about how when the two prophets are going to get killed and how the whole world is going to watch. How do you think that's going to happen? Streaming. What's that boy that forward to my revolution should not be televised? So what is it going to be? Streamed? Church, you behind. Some of you feel like you've been called to pastor, start a ministry, and you're, trying to, you're looking for a building. You need to be looking for a YouTube channel, a URL, an app to create the start. A fan page to start. It's that simple. And your audience will come. When I left pastoring to begin to do this, they called me witch, warlock, backslid. I spoke in everything up on the They still call me everything. Uh, somebody told me a bishop said, <laughs> bishop on the board of one of these great fellowships we talked about, um, you were you left the church because you never had a voice in the church. Say what? What does it mean my mic go on? I'm not stuttering. That must be the signal. But I see my thing coming in. What's wrong with it? Okay, maybe it's your cord, Kenna, because I don't see that. But anyway, so you messed me up. You did it again. <sighs> Lord have mercy. But let me go. Let's take some more calls. Let's go. <laughs> Caller ended at 9945. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, Larry. How are you? Calling from Minnesota, and I'm just going to name, I remain anonymous. And um, my heart is so disheartening concerning um, John. And I remember when he first started his ministry, I was really rooting for him when I first met him. It was um, the Teach Me How to Love You with Bishop Reese's um, ministry many years ago, um, early 2000, early 2000. And I thought he was a great. At the time, he wasn't pastor yet. He was just um, on the on one of the uh, presenters and studying his um, his music and things like that. And I thought and he was a great comedian, and I thought he was really nice. And then when I knew he started pastoring and things like that, I was like, oh, okay, you know, I was all really rooting for him because I thought he had great um, ambition. No, he was very ambitious, but I thought that things were really worked out for him because I felt that I felt his heart and his spirit that he could have been a great leader. But then when things kind of unfold, and especially um, early this year concerning his marriage, and I understand as a leader, you become a public um, agent, you become a public speaker, so everything that you do most time becomes public. And I understand that, and we as leaders we still have the right to maintain the personal life as opposed to um, even when they're in leadership. But then when when the thing came out with his car, I didn't have any problem with him. I think what I said, I said, I said, well, if she can afford the car to be a blessing to his wife because of whoever 
um, he feels like she has been to him, then kudos to him. He will call her, and he has the right to do all that. But if he uses the church's money, that would be out of order. And and I just left it alone because I just feel like it's not my place to judge him where or how he spends his own personal money if that's how he, what he chooses to do. That's his wife. He can do that. But then again, when you come to the church, um, a lot of things happen in the church nowadays. And when God extends his grace to us, especially as leaders, when you become a leader and you do things and God covers you, it's not an excuse to think that he overlooks the wrong. Because I know a lot of some people say that the grace of God covers so it means that I can keep doing what I'm doing and it's okay. But that's not what the grace of God means. It's just unfortunate that we have fallen into the predicament where um, pretty much I would say boldly that the grace of God has expired. Now he's being exposed to whatever it is, um, you know, that, that pretty much I would say this graceful and shameful. Now many others out there have to see this and make mockery of this church, make mockery of leadership, make mockery of the name of Christ, make mockery of the entire body of Christ. I think that is a joke that this is all about money grab and that is not a good representation to what the church is especially the leadership. And that is like it's hard for people who want to give them money and it's kind of offering because you have people who want to abuse and be the authority, who want to be the position. And if any of it is true, um, all I can say is that he deserves what he gets. He you say he deserves what he gets. Thank you so much for calling in. One of the things that um, it is unfortunate, I heard what she said, what she said was unfortunate. It is unfortunate. And it is, I believe, and I know y'all may not believe this. And you don't have to. We don't have to agree. I believe church, black church, a lot of times for a lot of these people that start churches, it's a money grab. It's a grab at money, power, and six, no lie. Whether you're the pastor, you're on staff, you're the musician, you employed or in a position of power, I think for a lot of people in the black church, it's a money grab, it's money, power, and sex. Am I saying all churches? No, man, no. Am I saying many? Uh huh. Am I saying most? Let me keep looking. I ain't saying most yet. <laughs> but I'm saying many. I am saying that. Definitely not all. My dad is a pastor. That man wouldn't hurt a fly. Love his wife, love us, and all his children, all his grandkids, and love all the members that he has. Good man. But those kind of men are few. In my opinion. Just my opinion. Man, and it's, uh, I don't know what happens when they get the money. I do know what happened. Let me tell you how I know. Because when you have a lot of money and a lot of influence and power, people and even more money just come to you. And all types of people. If you ever had a fetish, you like light skin, small waist, wide hips, long hair, blue eyes, white, Puerto Rican. Oh, it's going to come to you. You're going to get the offer. And they, they don't even care if you're married or not. They just want you. Going to build you up. Fight for you. Going to be the place that you can go to to, to feel like a king. And if you ain't worked out your personal flaws, I'm talking about the flaws in your person, the voids, the gaps, what he liked to call the brokenness, which I'm so tired of that word. You, that, It's a wrap. And before you know it, you're going to use all that stuff to give yourself those dopamine shots, those releases. After so long, the porn ain't going to work no more. The pornobation ain't going to work. The eating don't work no more. 
you, at this point, you, you're looking for that different kind of high. And whether you're married or not, you're going to just start going through people, rummaging through bread basket, puss, vagina, throughout the bodies of the Christ. And maintain your job. Because your job, you have to preach, you have to prophesy and work miracles. And if you're gifted to do that, you're gifted to do that. You can do it even if you ain't living right. Even if you're, you don't, you have no prayer life no more, you still can pray over people because you used to have a prayer life because you used to be connected to God. You can still continue to do all that stuff and won't nobody know no difference because them out there in the pews, they ain't got no prayer life. They don't even read their Bible. They just believe whatever you say. It just, it's just all screwed up. And there needs to be a, a reform. And the key to the reform of the church is prophets. We got the apostles. Well, I have to tell you the truth. I'm going to say apostles and prophets. Let me, let me fix that. Because some of them, they just got the works, but they, are in, they ain't no apostles because they don't have the revelation. And then the Bible do say that we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Well, at this hour, the key to the reform is going to, we need the prophets. And, and I'm afraid that most of us don't even want to hear them. I'm talking about the prophets in the church, the prophets in the White House. I don't think we want to hear it. I think we think the prophet is John Gray. The prophet is not the whistleblower. The prophet is William Murphy who went to his daddy's house for Thanksgiving this weekend. Oh, I don't know, that's a whole nother issue I got. Not the whistleblower. The whistleblower is the prophet. The person that rises up and says X, Y, Z and talks about an injustice that is still presently going on and happening, people are being harmed. That You're looking at the function of the prophetic right there. So... <laughs> All right, I'm going to take some more calls. Caller in and in 2561. What's your name? Where you're calling from? You got one minute. Let's go. <sighs> all right, they hung up. Let me say this, and I want y'all to all stay around. I'm probably going to get to all the phone. I'm not going to get to the callers because I really need to go live again. I need to go take a break for like an hour. And come back and come live. Because there's something else that's bothering me. Put his picture up there. This situation here. Is bothering me. You saw the post about it. But I'm bothered. And let me tell you why I'm bothered. And I, I may have, I may just go I'll get me something to eat and come back live. Those of you that know, you know that I do ready. I was doing. I, I I'm not able to do nothing but Larry live mostly now and then also my my coaching sessions. Do consulting for pastors, musicians, business people that aren't even in the church, um, and radio promotion and stuff. So. He'll tell you, I took him from not being known in the gospel music industry at all, all the way to the Stillers. I did that last year. So I have a soft spot in my heart for him. Um, I think he's a great guy. I really do. But I don't like how he has handled what has happened. And all of what I'm seeing around If you a man of God, I don't understand how certain things can be handled the way that they have been handled, especially when it comes to your wife. Now, I'm divorced, but I'll let her tell it. Yeah, we divorced, but I ain't doing my wife a certain kind of way. I, that, it just ain't going to happen. Especially when their kids involved. 
and I ain't gonna try to snatch rights to own one of my kids from my baby mama. I'm not gonna do that. Cause I really need to go off and then come back. But I ain't gonna promise you that I'm gonna do that. But if you happen to see that notification come back, it's to talk about this. I might do it tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow, Thursday? Yeah, I can do it tomorrow night, maybe. What's tomorrow? Yeah. And maybe by then, they'll hear about it and one of them will call me. Um, they tell me they side before I, because what I know right now and the court documents that I've seen, I have an entire whole problem. And me having a problem means I'm going to talk. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't mean for it to harm anybody's life, but it could. I got caught in my morning, though. Um, I still may feel like doing it tomorrow evening. Who knows? And depends on what happened at court. I might be coming back to say a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like and share this broadcast. I'll catch you next time. What'd you say? I'll catch you next time. Sign up for Patreon and make sure you text. See you later. Goodbye.